Welcome everybody to the first rebuild of 2024. Hope you all had a very good Christmas and a happy new year and every success and uh, having a prosperous uh, 2024. So let's get on to the first rebuild of this year. We're going to go to Blackburn Rovers who are not doing particularly well. Who have been out of the premiership for quite a while. Or the top flight at least anyway. They are lying currently 17th in the championship table. Having lost four of the last four games. And one draw. They haven't won in quite a while. So it seems they've won 10 games out of 26. Under half. Lost 14. They've conceded an awful lot of goals. They are somewhere off the playoff places currently. In fact, to be fair, they're not that far off. Probably about 8 points. 5 points maybe. But there doesn't seem to be any way back looking at that form. So we are going to take over Blackburn for the next 5 seasons. See if we can uh, get them some stability and hopefully get them back into the Premiership and maybe win a trophy or two. We have got a million pound transfer budget, so that's good. Wage budget looks okay. The last one, the Premiership or the English Division One, as it was in 1995, so nearly 30 years ago. Wow, quite a way off. They are now enjoying a 21-year barren spell, having not won a competition since 2002, which was a Carabao Cup, incidentally. The hardest cup, I think, <laughs> domestically to win. This is their preferred formation, and the best players they have got, Gallagher, Hedges, Sigurdsson, Travis, Smodic, Wharton, Pickering, Hayam, Carter, Rankin, Costello, Volstert in goal, and a few loan obligations along with it. They want us to use... The youth system, only depending if the, any of the youth players are any good at all, that is. Play attacking football and don't sign players over the age of 28. Okay, I can live with that. It gives us a bit of a, a larger scale to work with. Work within the budget, finish in the top half this season. Be competitive in the FA Cup and Carabao Cup. Do the, when do they want us to 26-27 uh, season? So... Is that three, four seasons down the line? So let's delve into the finances first. They've got £16 million in the bank, which is good. There's our uh, transfer budget. There is about ten grand a week in wages we can play with. Any debts? Okay, that's an awful lot of debt. A gift loan. Are we expected to pay that back? Oh, repayable on departure of the chairperson. Okay. And there's a bank loan interest that we are paying. £14 million. It's not an awful lot, but... That's a massive gift loan, that is. Our staffing situation doesn't look that bad, apart from the medical staff, which isn't great. So if any of our players get injured, we're kind of uh, stuck in the mud. So have a look at our squad then by a bit. Well, let's have a look at age first. Have we got it? Wow, not one person over the age of 27. That is phenomenal. That's really, really good. And really chuffed with that as well. Wow. Uh, what about contracts, though? Are we... Uh, Okay, there's quite a few that are running out next season. Like Sigerson, who's on loan, Moran and Hill. Right, okay, let's go through some of our players. So Sigerson, obviously our best player. He's on loan. Nor coping. The left winger can play Cam as well. Nice. Warstat, the goalkeeper. That's good to see as well. Our second best player is our goalkeeper. 10 grand a week as well. He looks pretty decent. Britain, our right back. Although he is fighting with Costello though for that position travis lewis dm or midfield uh hi am defender six foot two play short simple passes who else we got uh schmodic midfield cam yeah quite st stable in the midfield as well 27 years old there's a lot of play with high potential as well like adam wharton very high potential actually in the midfield we could just stick our youth players in here actually to be honest there's quite a few of them moran as well 19 he's on loan Cam midfield attacking central Dolan, 21 year old winger. Wow, I think we will have amples of players, especially when some of them go back as well. That we have got some to replace, which is nice. Um, Okandi, very high potential, five star potential there. Right winger, yeah, it looks okay, but if given the chance, would he uh, take it? We wonder. Might be a chance to find out in the first season, maybe. Harry Leonard as well. Striker, 13 finishing. And Jake Garrett, another youngster. I don't think he's ready for the first team, but he could put him there, put himself there or thereabouts, so at least anyway. 
gets into the op opposition area. Okay, camp position then. Overall, the side doesn't look that bad at all. We only made one signing after contracts have been renewed and extended, etc. There wasn't really much uh, in the way of a transfer budget at all. But we bring in Peter Atebo. He was free. A free transfer to sit in the DM role. We are playing a 2DM formation which I think is best suited for the side because they've got more defensive midfielders. Played uh, in Greece, he's played in this championship and on loan at Watford as well in the Premiership, played a few games there as well. So he has a little bit of experience, but I think uh, attribute-wise he'll suit the club pretty well. He can dribble as well, which is quite good, and tackle, so they'll fit quite nicely into that role. So the formation is this, the 4-2-3-1, although I'm not sure I like the pressing forward formation. I'd rather have advanced attack. Fairly locked in one player is Mokande, right winger. He's got... Lots of potential. He can dribble the ball. He's reasonably quick as well. And he's one of, the, one of the younger players I want to see develop. And he's only 22 years old. That being said, results have gone our way. We started off with a massive 7-1 victory over West Brom at home. Followed by a 3-1 win over Salford in the Carabao Cup first round. We beat Rotherham, then Hull. We did lose to Watford, but Watford are probably one of the favourites to go up. And Doncaster, we beat in the second round of the Carabao Cup which leaves us against Preston in the third. We're currently lying in fourth position which is reasonably placed. I think we were top until we played Watford. Watford are below us. They have lost a game to Stoke who are above us. So it's so reasonably close. The season preview has us down at 13-1 to 1 to win the league. If we can get into the top three, brilliant. If not, then a playoff will have to suffice. But we have got a couple of plays in the Dream 11, which is always good to see. That's Sigerson and Britton. So let's go ahead and simulate our first season and see if we can get into the playoffs. More importantly, automatic promotion. See if we can do some damage in the Carabao Cup. We might actually go and win that. First season is over and it looks like we got ourselves into a playoff, which was the plan, but we didn't progress any further than that. It looks like Leicester and Birmingham got automatic promotion and Leeds finishing third got the last one, which suggests that they won the playoffs. We'll have a closer look at the results in just a second, but we didn't do too bad. 83 goals, 55 conceded. Conceded a fair amount for my liking, however... It's not as much as a majority of the teams in this league. We didn't have anybody sitting in the top three apart from Travis. He got 15 yellow cards. Go through the results. So we didn't get off to a bad start at all. Only one defeat in September. That was to Leicester. So Watford and Leicester we both lost to. But we did have some very good wins in there. A couple of 3-0s. Uh, we lost to Cardiff and Swansea the following month. Uh, we did hit quite a spat in December though. I guess there was a lot of games in a short amount of time. Obviously over the Christmas period. We sorted ourselves out after that. Uh, we drew 2-2 to West Brom after spanking them for 7-1 earlier on in the season though. A couple of more losses. Some more wins. No big wins. A 4-1 win over Swansea. Preston as well. An unbeaten April and then we uh, become a cropper towards the end. So we beat Norwich in the playoff semi-final. So we did get to the final. Early to lose to Leeds 3-0 in the end. Obviously being a little bit too strong for us. But we made it all the way to the finals. So, so close. I'm hoping now we can push forward with the players we've got. And maybe add one or two in that we can actually uh, storm the league next season. FA Cup, we get as far as uh, the replay in the third round. We played Sheffield United away and lost 2-1 at home, despite them having a player sent off as well. And we took the early lead. That is very disappointing. Carabao Cup, we got all the way as far as the semi-final. Wow, we're losing to Leicester, who I think won our league, didn't they? So we beat Salford, Doncaster, Preston, Fulham, 2-1. Newcastle we even beat as well. And then we lose to Leicester. I guess it was when we were on a little bit of a bad run of form, I guess. But uh, yeah, that's it's disappointing to lose both games to Leicester, in fact. Especially the home game. I feel like if we won that one, it could have been a little bit different for the second leg. Squad-wise, 21 goals for Ennis. I didn't expect him to play up front, actually, to be honest. 25 years old. I think he can hold the line if he wants to play there. 52 games for Makande with five assists. That's not bad for the youngster. Early 22 years old. Another season here. He should be up there or thereabouts. Sigerson, 13 and 13. Not bad at all. And I had noticed he's actually joining us on the 1st of July. So that is an added bonus. 
It really is. Shmodic as well, eight and seven. Wharton, six and one, not bad for the defender. Actually, that's pretty good for a defender. Six goals. 13 assists for Wharton. Pickering did quite well. Our goalkeeper. He's only 24 years old. Looks pretty good. 63 conceded. 14 clean sheets. That's not bad. And our other goalkeeper, Piers. 7 conceded in 5 games. I tell you what. It's not bad luck inside. We just probably need more quality players. Financially, we have been given... A £400,000 more in the budget. Not much in the way of wages either. So we'll have to sort out the uh, contracts once again and see what we have left. It might be another one of them seasons where we might have to look to the free market. So one of our first signings is Anor Sigerson from uh, Moscow. He was on loan with us last season. Like I said, the end of last season, he is or was planned to come the 1st of July this season. And uh, yes, he's come through on a free, and I'm not kidding. He's uh, 11 goals for us last season, 6-6 six six so far for us this season with an assist and two Player of the Match awards. He's certainly repaying us back with that. And uh, yeah, £30 million. Thank you very much. We're going to, if we do, end up moving him along. But I doubt it very much. At 25 years old, I think I'm going to hang on to him as long as possible. Another free transfer... And uh, this guy was not attached to anybody, but we bring in 26-year-old Croatian Marin Pongracic, centre-back. I felt like we needed a, a stronger centre-back at the back. He's uh, quite physical. Aggression and bravery is uh, probably up there as well with great strength also. Good balance. He can tackle as well, which is uh, always uh, a good thing. And uh, passing as well. He is going to be playing as a ball-playing defender as a stopper, though. A buddy can play as a wide centre back and uh, obviously a central defender. But uh, for a freebie, again, six foot three, I think he'll do pretty well for us. And the only money we have spent because of the limited amount we did at after contracts, etc., was £600,000 on Toma Basic, central midfielder. He's going to be playing as a box to box. Looks pretty decent, actually. Good teamwork, free kick taken. He can uh, do that as well. So I'm assuming long shots should be quite good. Well, it's okay. But other than that, his rest of his attributes look pretty nice as well. Probably not the best player for the midfield. But all our other players are uh, taken up like Wharton in the cam roll. We've got Sigerson at left wing. Costello right back. Yeah, we've got other players in other uh, positions. So he's probably our best one for the central midfield. We have deviated from the previous formation. We are bringing in a midfielder now. We're pushing Basic up and uh, Atiba, we've locked him in as a DM here as well. And needless to say, our uh, results a lot better than last season. We haven't lost a game yet. We've only drawn the one game so far. But we started off our campaign with a 2-1 win over Reading. Then we beat Bristol City 1-0. Drew Sheffield United. Norwich we beat. Bolton we beat. And Plymouth we beat as well. And also in the Carabao Cup we're through to the third round after beating Stockport and Bradford City. We play now Leicester who were a bane in our side last season. I think they knocked us out in the Carabao Cup last season. I think think if I just have a quick look it was yeah home and away the line second in the table behind Middlesbrough Middlesbrough I don't think finished that high up last season I think they were near the bottom or bottom half at least anyway but uh, goal difference is playing a good part we're unbeaten five wins and a draw and we are predicted at eight to one fourth position finish which is nice only Wharton in the dream 11 currently but there is a few Burnley players in there Crystal Palace obviously and Sheffield United who have got relegated they're predicted to finish 10th or mid table so let's get into our second season let's see if we can uh, get this automatic promotion into the top flight <laughs> Season 2 is over and we fail yet again by lots of things to get it back to the Premiership. We're finishing fourth position. It's an improved position from last season. We've scored more goals. We've conceded less, better points. I think we've got 10 points more than last season, actually. I think we got 80 last season. We did 80 points. 90 would have got us automatic promotion last season it only gets us fourth spot this season that's insane and we only lost six games as well second least to uh, Southampton who only lost four but we drew 15 games wow that is the story of the season I think however Niall Ennis scores 25 goals for us and he tops the goal scoring charts 
for us uh, for this second season and we don't go up. McCandy and uh, Schmodic there with seven player of the match awards. Basic as well, 18 assists. This is by far our best season and we finish in fourth. So having a look at our form then, we had a very good October to begin with. Then it all started going a little bit wrong in the following month. September, two draws, a win and a loss. Losing to Southampton, actually. Not a bad October. Two wins and two draws. Start November with two losses. Finish with wins. We have that one loss against Crystal Palace the following month. Five on win over Swansea. Wow. Actually, we've not done too bad for the next couple of months, which is pretty good. Stoke 5-1. A 4-4 draw with Charlton. We do lose to West Ham. Uh, Brom. Watford we lost to. Yeah, there it is, look. April. April and May. Six draws, which is literally cost us. We didn't uh, win our uh, home game against Middlesbrough in the playoffs. So we got to the semi-final. Well, we played the semi-final two legs and we uh, drew and lost. FA Cup, we don't get past Sunderland in the third round. Probably concentrating too much on the league, to be honest. Carabao Cup, we fare a bit better getting to the fourth round after beating Stockport, Bradford City and Leicester, but losing to Everton 3-1. Goal-wise then, so now Lennis, 29 goals. Superb. I think we could safely say that he would be our forward. He is 26 years old. 16-7 for Smodic as well. 14-6 for Sigurdsson. 11-6 for... McCande, 7-7 seven and seven for Dolan, Costello, 6-8. and eight. Basic, 19 assists for the season. Superb at Natubo as well. 8 assists with 2 goals. And our goalkeeper, he done really well actually. 49 conceded and 44. 12 clean sheets as well. Maybe we push everybody into midfield now and go for it this season. But uh, other than that, yeah, I'm disappointed. But... Stats-wise, it's looking very, very good. We have been given £4 million for this transfer window. Maybe we can do something with that. Push into the midfield. Maybe we uh, go uh, all-out attack, possibly. Who knows? Maybe a 4-2-4, possibly. Or keep it as the same, but just improve the positions. Right, OK. Let's uh, go and do something in the window. I'm sure there'll be something that, that we can make happen. Let's go and do that. Starting with some outs and half a million pound of players going out. We have uh, Teller Lovic. His uh, work permit was not renewed. He went to Bari for £200,000. He wasn't getting any game time, so we let him go. Tronstadt as well kicked up a stink. He's gone to Benevento for 150000 Sam Gallagher, a forward to Wigan for 150000 And then Harry Leonard, another... I think another forward. Uh, he's gone out on loan. He's not getting game time. So we might as well let him use his uh, game time out on loan. Hopefully he'll come back a better player. So the first of our signings was a freebie. 27-year-old Jeff Rain Adelaide. He's going to play in the cam position. We're going to have Wharton drop back into midfield. We're going to go for a 4-2-3-1. More of an attacking formation this time round we want to uh, get up there or thereabouts at least anyway and uh, his stats wise look really nice indeed for 1.1 million pounds yeah we spent a million pounds for from Firenze Gabriel Silva right winger McCande can do the job there but I want uh, another person in there that's going to give him a little bit of competition. Both of them are high potential and either one can play there, to be perfectly honest. You can play in cam, we can play at left wing as well. We want. I wanted to bring in another wingers as backup to our two uh, on the left and right. And uh, he can play both. So uh, that's where he's going to be playing. Pretty good physically as well. Great at dribbling and crossing as well. And from FC Andorra for £5 million. Pounds. We didn't splash out too much, but uh, we had some uh, clauses that we uh, clawed back. We sold, which in increased the uh, transfer budget, but I think we're only at 40% of the revenue. So we didn't really get an awful lot, but £5 million pounds from FC Andorra, Jose Marseille, Marsa, Marsha even. Centre-back or DM, but we're not using DMs this time around, so a centre-back option, left-back as well. Again, pretty good physically. He's quite quick. Very good first touch as well. He's on the rise and he's only 23 years old as well. So even if we have him for a season or two, it'll help us hopefully get out of this division. So if we have a look at the new formation, we are going to be using the, the formation I used with Aberdeen, which uh, was quite successful with them. I don't think we actually won the league with Aberdeen. I can't quite remember. I'm sure we might have done. Or it was just second spot all the time. But we did pretty well from where they were. And uh, this is the formation we're going to be rocking this season. We just uh, changed a couple of the positions to complete wing backs either side. Because it best suits our two wing backs. And obviously the engage role here 
for Adelaide. If we pick our best 11, this is what we have got. A couple of players out on international duty. Ennis Sigerson, Adelaide, Silva, Wharton, Basic, Costello, Pongracic, Marsha, Pickering and Wallstadt as well. Pretty solid side and I'm not kidding, this side should get us automatic promotion and I'm hoping. So far so good, we did lose our first game in the championship 2-0 to Preston. Then we lost to Wigan in the Caraboa, we're out of that and uh, guess who scored both goals? Of course, either side of the halves, Sam Gallagher, how annoying is that? Then we beat Sunderland, Bolton, Cardiff. Sheffield Wednesday, all pretty close actually, and Coventry we just recently drew with, which leaves us second in the table currently. That's not bad going at all. Uh, there's only one team unbeaten, and that's Coventry, would you believe? Now we're jumping up to third position for the media. Six to one now to win the league with Leicester, who got went up. Now they've come back down again. Uh, one to ninety-one to win the league. I mean, what sort of odds are that? You might as well not have any odds there at all. So let's simulate our third season. Third time lucky we can get out of this division. <music> Finally done it. We race into the uh, playoffs and we win it 3-2. We play Sunderland in the final. We race. Uh, we have a 1-0 lead very early on. The Sunderland do come back to equalise. A great goal there. But uh, we do power ahead to lead 3-1 going into the last 20 minutes where we uh, concede one final goal. 3-2, the final result. I can't believe it's taken us this long to get to the Premiership. Another playoff. Not disappointed this time. What a cracking goal from, from the underside of the bar. But uh, Sunderland racing through to uh, make it a non-easy last 20 minutes of the match. And as you can see, we did have uh, quite a good pass completion there. 90%, that's pretty good. 52% possession overall. 3 XG to 1, 16 shots to 9. It, it suggests we had an easy game. But uh, yeah, that goal with 20 minutes to go from Sunderland, yeah, did make it uh, uneasy. But uh, the Premiership, here we come. But as you can see, we finished in 6th position. Very disappointed with that. We draw an awful lot of games once again. However, we do score 92 goals. I think the most in the league. However, we do concede 60, but we have a good goal difference though of uh, 32. But 78 points. I think uh, that's the least points we've had on this campaign so far. After a good start, we do falter again with the odd losses. A 5-1 win over Reading there. And a 5-3 over Huddersfield. Brilliant. But again, we lose to West Brom. We lose to QPR this time. 2-0 home loss to Millwall and away to Luton. Again, the draws come back to haunt us once again. So many draws. Maybe this might stand good in the Premiership, but uh, we made hard work of it this season. But third time lucky, we're back where we belong. FA Cup reached the fifth round, losing to Crystal Palace in the end. 3-2 after beating Bradford City after a replay. Swindon in the fourth. And uh, yeah, that winner... Coming in the 88th minute from uh, Jamal Lewis. Carabao Cup, as we've seen, we got knocked out by uh, Gallagher's brace for Wigan in the first round. Squad-wise, however, goals were um, not hard to come by, though, in the end. Ennis with 24-3. and three. Silva, in his first season, 22-19. and 19, 41 gold contributions. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. Sigerson, 19-7. 13 and 10 for Bassich as well. Dolan comes on for a 7 and a 5. 5 and 8 for Wharton. Adelaide, 5 and 13 in his first season as well. Brilliant. Wharton not getting as much though this season. However, playing his new role in the midfield at 22 years old, definitely one for a future and he's worth £48 million now as well. A goalkeeper, however, is going to have to do a lot better in the Premiership, conceding 64 goals in 49 games. However, we have been given a boost for the transfer market. 38, 39 million pounds. More than what we actually have got. We're going to have to find out about that transfer revenue as well because that needs to increase. Right, starting season four then with the outs. Etibo has gone to Vigo for up to four and a half million pounds. We did lose Jake Garrett to Hibs for 450,000. Hyam, the defender, he's gone to a Sevilla. Didn't get much game time, but uh, nine million pounds in the end. Maybe thinking we should have had him as a backup, to be honest. And a couple of other players going out on loan, Leonard. And Schmodix as well. We tried to offload him. 
He's 30 years old now, not going to get much game time as we brought in better players. But yeah, he's gone out on loan. So uh, I think his uh, contract runs out next year anyway. So we'll probably let that go in the end. So our first signing from Genoa, a centre-back. Uh, not a, He can play right back as well, but we're bringing Radu Dragusin, Romanian, 24 years old. Very good stats with very good heading. Stamina and physicals look really nice as well. Marking. And he can pass the ball as well for a ball playing defender. So he can play alongside uh, Pogracic, possibly. But we'll see how that goes. From Leipzig for £2 million, we're bringing in Sanusi Barr, left back. Britain, we tried to offload. He's getting into his 30s now. There's only Pickering, really, that he can be as a backup. But uh, he was a pick of the bunch, really. £2 million, and not a bad player at all. From PSG for £8 million, we're bringing in another attacking midfielder. We have got Adelaide who can play there, so he's going to be a pretty good backup. And uh, he can play midfield as well, which is uh, adding to the spice in this team because we have got some very, very good players now. 22 years old. Like I say, £8 million. What a bargain. He's got some potential left. Some physicals look really nice as well. And he's got lots of time to grow. And on a free, we uh, found Inaki Pina, 27-year-old goalkeeper. Arguably our best goalkeeper on the book so far. Wallstadt did have a good season last season, but I don't think he's going to cut it for this premiership. But uh, he'll be good as a backup, though, to be perfectly honest. Again, very good stats. Just uh, hoping he can grow a little bit more as well. And then really a panic buy, to be honest, although he's uh, slotted into the first team quite easily ahead of Ennis. A new striker, Fabricio, 25-year-old Brazilian. Quite a bargain, really, to be honest. The stats-wise look okay. There were other uh, forwards out there, but they just wanted far too much money. 35 and a half grand a week. We are moving in with the big boys now. So, uh, yeah, we're going to hopefully he'll uh, do some good for us. Two goals in the league for us in four, and I think he's got five overall. So for this season, Pina and Fabricio are locked in. I want to make sure that they get the game time that they require, but we're still going to go with this formation, but we have tweaked it a little bit more. I think we've got DLP and ball winning in midfield now, as well as a winger and invert inverted winger just the one defeat our first game in the premiership a 5-0 battering at arsenal then we followed that up with a 2-2 draw against manchester united and we were up twice in that game nil nil with fulham away and everton we drew 1-1 at home with uh, fabricio getting on the score sheet and again we're going ahead the carabao cup i'm not gonna lie there are early wins <laughs> Uh, 3-0 against Leicester and 5-1 against Sheffield Wednesday, who we play next in the Premiership. We are currently lying in 16th position. No wins, but three draws and just the one loss. Although that 5-0 battery from Arsenal's really did the damage for us. They've got 10 goal difference already. And uh, yeah, I thought we did quite well with our signings. We got picked up some bargains. I think those that should be able to see us survive the Premiership. Uh, we're predicted to finish 19th alongside Leicester who are just above us, but 700 to 1. I think that's a very, very harsh. Sheffield Wednesday, 350 to 1. So let's get into fourth season and uh, let's see if we survive our first season back in the big time. We survived our first season back in the Premiership. We survived quite comfortably, about 17 points in the end. Although we were 10 points off the next place up in 13th West Ham. I'm more impressed that we managed to uh, survive more than anything. But uh, conceding 70 goals. Wow. Looking at the results. They, it wasn't too bad looking at really for the first half of the season. Up to the end of December where we beat Leicester and West Ham. We did lose to Newcastle. We beat Norwich, Bournemouth. Chelsea we win. Draw with Liverpool even. I mean, they're not bad results. And then the second half, wow. We might have had injuries or something, I don't know. But that is, that's horrible. Three wins in the second half of the season. That's relegation form, that is. I wonder where we were at that point. Yeah, it's a lot of the defeats there. Not many goals being scored either. 4-2 loss to Newcastle, 3-0 to West Ham. We did beat Leicester, though. We drew Man City and Tottenham. They're not bad results. Lost to Liverpool only just at Anfield. Smashed by Chelsea. Okay, I'm hoping we can improve on this next season. The Carabao Cup. Wow, we get right to the semi-finals after beating Leicester, Sheffield Wednesday, Ipswich, Leeds. And then after 2 nil nil games with Tottenham, it was Ennis and Pickering who missed the penalties. So close to a, f a domestic final. That would have been really something. FA Cup we get as far as the quarter-finals. 
after beating Chelsea, Preston, Bournemouth, and they're coming a cropper against uh, Wolves. 3-2, 86 minute from Donnelly as well. We took the lead and then had to come back from behind. Yeah, to lose to a late winner. That's disappointing. Though domestically, we weren't too bad. So let's have a look at the goals then. Who's Fabricio, 18 and 3 in uh, 47, which isn't too bad in the um, Premiership, but it looks like he's dropped off one hell of a lot. What on earth has happened here? What? Why? <laughs> he showed so much promise. I mean, having a look, I mean, he didn't, he scored 12 and 40 for FLU in the same season that we picked him up. He scored 12 and 37. I mean, it's still not a bad return, depending on how much money we have. We may have to go hunting for another striker, possibly, because uh, even though he's delighted, he's probably the weakest player in the team, actually. Uh, Silver, 10 and 10. Sigerson nine and seven, Romsey's uh, eight and six, Adelaide eight and one, Adam Wharton who's shown so much promise, twenty three years old, worth a hundred and four million pounds. Likes to play on D he might end up playing DM. We might go back to a DM role next season, so he might end up playing there. But he can play anywhere along that top line. He's more suited to midfield though, I feel, and his attributes have literally shot up. Look at them attributes. Some have gone up by quite a bit. Three on marking, three on decisions. Definitely a play you should be picking up if you can. Constantly in our side. Well, he has been since we've taken over and he uh, has delivered. Goalkeeper Pino in his first season, though, could have been let down by his defenders. Although, Marsa, he's uh, almost a four, five star as well. Wow. So, going into next season, £41 million. Pounds. We've been given a boost in the wages budget as well. So, if we offload a few players and bring in a couple of more quality ones, we should be able to um, survive the Premiership again. And who knows, finishing the top 10. So, to start off the transfer window, we bring in probably one of my favourite strikers in the game is Francesco Pio Esposito. £6.7 million pounds from Inter Milan. I just think this kid has got it all. 22 years old. He's scored two goals for us in the league already in four games. He's got excellent heading, penalty taking. He can finish as well very quick, physically very nice indeed. And uh, he scored a fair few goals as well. Next up from Sassuolo for £12 million, we've brought in Luca Lipani. Looking forward to seeing how well he does. I think he can uh, challenge Basic in the midfield. Uh, I was going to play him as a DM role, but I don't think the DM really works for us. He's got a very good jumping reach. Physicals look really nice as well. His rest of his attributes isn't too bad. At 22 years old, high potential. I can't really moan too much. He's worth up to £42 million already. And he has scored two goals for us in three. So our two new signings are doing really well so far. And finally, from Sheffield Wednesday, a massive £24 million for Chiquino. He can play either side of the wings. That's what I was really after. Somebody who's quite versatile at either side. I think really we're going for a left wing battle against uh, Sigerson as well. Because we've got Silver on the right hand side. So I want to Chiquino in, in here. He's very quick. Good dribbling skills. Can cross the ball as well. I think all we want in a, a winger really. 27 years old though. That's the only downside. However, he's still in his prime. One goal for us in four. Friendlies went okay. I mean, I quite enjoyed them. And then uh, we hit the Premiership season and we beat Manchester United 6-5 in an epic game with the winner coming in the 98th minute from Adelaide. Wow. <laughs> Just wow. And then we go away to Anfield and thrash Liverpool 3-0 with two goals, well, three goals in the last 10 minutes, but a 92nd, 97th minute for Adelaide. He did it again. We did lose to Chelsea 2-0. I think they were second at the time. I don't know. Uh, Leeds, we beat in the Carabao Cup second round. Lost to Newcastle. Got absolutely spanked by them, to be perfectly honest. Esposito getting one goal. And uh, Wolves, we beat on penalties after a 0-0 draw in the third round. We don't know who we got in the uh, Carabao Cup fourth round yet. Currently in line in 10th position. 1-2, lost to. Mid-table or above. That's the plan for this season. And obviously to stay in the Premiership. I think we've uh, gone up a place, 500 to 1, even Forrest are above us. With the two newly promoted sides, Palace and Sunderland, expected to go straight back down as well. So let's defy them odds, finish mid-table and above. I'm sure we can do this. <laughs>
getting good at defying the odds and in our final season we finish in eighth position that is incredible considering we finished last season in 14th we were predicted to go down yet again defying the odds is what we do and blackburn i say have are comfortably a premiership side night we escaped relegation comfortably last season more than comfortable this season 23 points in the end and we we're only off uh, a few points from uh, getting a european spot as well man united go into the conference league amazingly enough they managed to beat us, us to it and it looks like we took a loss the last game of the season which probably ruined it for us and esposito in his first season i did say i like this guy give him a couple of years and he will be up there 19 goals second highest goal scorer in the league behind Ireland, who almost doubles ourselves and um, calvert lewin's goal tally other than that there's early ranking costello getting the most yellow cards but apart from that we didn't really feature in any of the other top threes so again another topsy-turvy season with a lot of draws a lot of wins uh, and uh, a lot of losses as well as we have a very good september palace southampton and forest all being put to the sword we did lose to man city and leicester in october unbeaten november with a 1-0 win over Leeds in that one. Nothing's really convincing, really. The wins are very close. We lost to Everton 4-2 then 4-0 to Arsenal. But we did beat West Ham and Tottenham. United lost 2-4-3, but we beat Liverpool. Did we beat Liverpool earlier on? We did 3-0 away and we beat them 2-1 at home. Incredible. And then we uh, go to Old Trafford and lose. We lose at home to Newcastle, but beat Palace and Southampton again. Again, another couple of losses. Chelsea, Villa and Sunderland end at February in between Leicester and Forest wins. We do have a 5-3 victory over Brighton there, which is quite good. Three losses on the bounce, Leeds, City and Everton before beating Fulham, Spurs and West Ham and then losing to Arsenal last game of the season. If any one of them losses turned into a win, we might have grabbed a European spot. Carabao Cup, we get to the semi-finals again. This time losing to Chelsea 5-2 over the two legs. And that's after beating Leeds, Wolves, Man United we beat in the fourth round 3-1. And then we beat Everton for succumbing in the semis. But again, another semi-final appearance. FA Cup, not a lot to write home about. Chelsea puts out of that competition as well. But looking at the squad, that Esposito, wow, 20 goals, 5 assists in 43. That's not bad in his first season. He's only 22 and he's only going to get better and better. 12 on 12 for Chiquino as well, which isn't too bad in his first season. Zern Lapini, 8 and 3. That's not bad from that position where he was, and he's uh, improved at no end. If we just have a quick look at him, he must have. Uh, there must be a big. Wow, look at that progress. <laughs> he's from a 3 to a 4. Well, I'd say a 4 star, really. Attributes, let's have a look. Yeah, they're all going up, and uh, he looks like a player to, uh, if you could find him pick him up that's a pretty good buy 23 years old as well ramesses as well eight and five eight and five for silver schmodix he was out alone six and three he is 32 years old though adelaide sit four and six 11 assists for wharton seemed to have dropped off a little bit and uh, our goalkeeper pina yeah conceding an awful lot of goals 75 and 44 Maybe it's the defence in front of him, I don't know. But other than that, it's uh, I'm pretty happy with the way they've played. I mean, they're only getting better and better. Only two people getting double figures, though, unfortunately. Two seasons in, our coaching staff doesn't look that bad at all. Well above average. We're well under average for the recruitment team, though. And uh, medical staff, that's improved. Did we break any records along the way? So let's have a quick look. Nothing so far. That's not great uh 2027 what's this the highest gate receipts against preston in the fa cup fourth round and 26 27 was the average attendance 25 and a bit not too bad at all uh anything 2027 high scoring match 6-5 against man united yeah i do remember that one 24 25 season most goals scored by a player in the seasons ennis i'm sure esposito will beat that eventually 25 26 highest average rating was uh, Basic 7.16 we didn't break many records though but most assists in a season is Silva 19 Pina gets most clean sheets in a season 15 and Silva again gets most player of the match awards and anything else youngest goal scorer Wharton 19 years 222 days against Middlesbrough in uh, September 23. 2027, there you go. Most matches without scoring five. It's not a record you probably want to have, though. So the highest transfer paid was for Chiquino for £24 million. 
from Sheffield Wednesday. Right, so that's where we're going to leave it. Thank you very much for watching. Unfortunately, we didn't get any silverware, but we did come close and we got ourselves into the Premiership and I'd say comfortably sit in there, which was the main uh, plan. Just unfortunately, we didn't have as many seasons in the Premiership as I would have liked, but we got there in the end. Probably the following season, we'll be fighting for Europe. So if you did enjoy that, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and we'll see you in the next rebuild.